क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hello friends in the previous topic we have discussed about the peptide linkage and now in this topic i am going to talk about the preparation of the dipeptides from the glycine and alanine so this is what i am going to talk about so now let's get started so friends in this topic we have to discuss about the possible dipeptides that is what we could obtain from the glycine and the alanine and there are four possibilities for example if we talk about the preparation of a dipeptide from glycine itself so in that case suppose if we have to consider the glycine and the glycine has a formula that is nh2 c h and instead of r that will be h this is c double bond o oh so therefore this is glycine or we could represent it by gly and suppose if it is combined with another molecule of glycine so in that case we could say that is nh2 c h h this is c double bond o oh suppose if it has to form a peptide linkage so in that case we will obtain a dipeptide so in that case there will be elimination of water but the elimination of water from and the elimination of water will be from here that is this oh it will be removed and this hydrogen it will be removed and the product that is what we could get is nh2 let me give the name for this one also that is this is glycine nh2 ch2 c double bond o and h again here will be ch2 and this is cooh so therefore here we have got that is one peptide linkage and the overall molecule it has been called to be dipeptide so here the thing is to be mentioned that is the dipeptide that has been obtained from glycine and glycine it will be quite different from the dipeptide that is what we could obtain from the glycine and alanine or it will be different from that of the dipeptide that is obtained from alanine and alanine so this was a reaction of glycine with glycine so as to obtain a peptide and now let me talk about the next one so now let me talk about the next reaction that is suppose if we talk about that is nh2 c h ch3 Here we have replaced the R group with CH3, and this is C double bond O OH. That is known as alanine, which can be given a symbol that is ALA. And talking about the other one, suppose if we consider NH2 CH CH3, and here it is C double bond O OH. And suppose if this undergoes through a dehydration, that is. while heating suppose or by using any kind of condition suppose if we get a removal of water that is oh from here and hydrogen atom from here so in that case we could get a following peptide or basically we could say dipeptide and that is nh2 c ch3 over here h c double bond o nh for this one this is c h ch3 c o oh so therefore this is again a dipeptide that is what we have obtained but this is quite different from the previous one and now let me talk about the next two possibilities so talking about the next two possibility is suppose what happens if glycine is reacted with alanine so in that case suppose we have to follow the procedure that means the glycine should be on the left hand side and the alanine should be on the right hand side so in that case what kind of dipeptide that is what we could get let us observe that also So friends suppose if we have to talk about the reaction of glycine and alanine so in that case let me give you the formula for the glycine and that is NH2 CH H COOH so this is glycine so if glycine is treated with alanine that is NH2 C H here there will be CH3 and here there will be COOH that is alanine So in that case, obviously there will be removal of water, and the product that is what we could get over here by removal of water is NH two CH two C double bond O, then NH. Here we can find that is C CH three C O O H. So this is the peptide that is what we have obtained over here on the peptide linkage, but the carbon next to this nitrogen. has ch3 over here and the carbon next to this carbon that is this carbonyl group of the peptide linkage here there is ch2 so therefore 
we understand that this is a peptide but what if we compare it with the reaction with alanine and glycine so let me talk about that also suppose if we talk about the reaction of alanine that is nh2 ch here it is ch3 and here it is cooh that is alanine suppose if it is treated with glycine that is nh2 ch2 cooh So even though we are using the same reagents, but they are arranged in sequence. And that is what we could get a particular product and the particular product will be NH2, C, H, CH3, having C double bond O, N, H. Here you can find that is in the previous reaction, we have got CH2 beside C double bond O, but here we have getting CH, CH3. And talking about this one, further part, that is we have CH2 and COOH. So here we have got a dipeptide. But this dipeptide is different from that of the previous one. So this is the important thing that is what I'm going to talk about is for the formation of DNA, so whenever DNAs are also been formed, so there is a sequence where we could find that is a particular nucleotide is combined with that of a nucleoside. So that kind of arrangement is obviously it is different whenever alanine is combined with glycine or whenever glycine is combined with alanine, we get different dipeptide. And that is how basically the DNA follows such rule. And that is how basically the formation of DNA is different of the of every individual and that's the reason that we can't match up a DNA and the two DNA of two different person cannot be the same so this is also a sequence where we have got to understand that is how dipeptides are very much important in their sequence so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood this video very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time till then don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much